Hi, Good morning. Candace. Hi, Dr. Ross. Hi, Julie. How are you both? We're doing Great, well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Of course. You know, Dr. Ross, let's start with you. Why should people make improving digestive health one of their top New Year resolutions and stick to it? Well, we're learning more about how the digestive tract is, is really the, the cornerstone for our overall well-being and health. And if you're not feeling well in your tummy, chances are you're not feeling great in general. Many people ignore GI symptoms, things like bloating, gas, or diarrhea, because maybe they've had them occasionally in the past, they don't think too much of it, or they're just simply too embarrassed to bring it up with their doctor. But this is a mistake. If the symptoms are happening frequently or affecting your life, they could be a sign of an underlying GI condition, one of which is EPI, or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, which is what Julie's experienced. And you really want to talk to your doctor to get to the bottom of what's going on and get the correct diagnosis. And why is it so important to schedule a visit with our doctor before making major changes to diet or activity? Well, when we start to eliminate foods on our own uh, because maybe our friend did it or it's a new fad or we think there's a certain food that's causing us to stress, when you do that on your own before speaking with your doctor, you may affect the accuracy of certain tests that they may want to do. So you may affect their ability to really diagnose you properly. Before making those changes, talk to your doctor about how you're feeling, why you want to make those changes, and see if it's a good idea. Um, check with them first. And same thing with exercise. If you're not used to exercising, you're trying something totally new that's maybe working at a different part of your body, different muscles, you may want to check with your doctor first to make sure that you're not putting yourself at risk for any kind of injury. And why are people sometimes reluctant to visit their doctor with digestive problems? You know, I think what we're sort of raised as, as young women or girls or, or men as well, to not discuss certain topics in public. It's not considered polite, talking about your bathroom habits, things like that. Uh, so it's easy to get embarrassed and not want to bring it up. But your doctor has heard it all before. There's nothing you're going to say that's going to shock her. So make sure you get over that embarrassment and really give them the information they need to help you. We're not mind readers. We can't help you the best way we can unless we have all the information. And Julie, how are you prioritizing your digestive health in the new year? There's a few things that I'm focusing on, um, one of which is keeping a food journal. So um, keeping not only what I'm eating and maybe the calories that are in it, focusing on you know New Year's resolutions for some people, but actually focusing on my digestive health, so symptoms that might be associated with certain foods that I eat, so that I can then take that to my doctor and discuss it with him and see if there's any changes I need to make to my my food intake. Additionally, I'm trying to exercise more frequently, um, keep my stress levels down because there's a, a very big connection between your stress levels and your digestive health. Um, and that really does make an impact on my digestive health pers personally. Um, additionally, getting enough sleep, which is really hard for some of us, especially if we keep a busy schedule. But it's something that I find that if I don't get enough sleep, then my GI symptoms become worse. And Dr. Raj, what is EPI? EPI stands for exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, and it's a condition where your pancreas is not producing adequate amounts of pancreatic enzymes, digestive enzymes, that help you digest your food. So as you can imagine, if you're not digesting food well, you may experience diarrhea, bloating, gas, pain, and sometimes unexplained weight loss. Who could have EPI, and what are the most common symptoms associated with it? It can occur really with anyone, um, male, female. It is associated with certain conditions of the pancreas, like pancreatitis, for example, which is an inflammation of the pancreas. And the symptoms are, uh, unfortunately, they are common GI symptoms that could be symptoms of something else, which makes the diagnosis kind of hard to do on your own. But they include bloating, diarrhea, gas, abdominal pain after eating, and weight loss. And Julie, when were you first diagnosed with EPI? I was di diagnosed back in 2011. Um, I experienced pretty much every single one of those symptoms that Dr. Raj described. And it got to a point where I was having to schedule bathroom breaks around my ballet classes, for example. So it really was affecting my lifestyle and what I could do on a daily basis. And so having that conversation with my doctor, putting any embarrassment aside and, and telling him what was really going on was really important to get diagnosed and get the right treatment. And how does uh, having EPI impact you as a dietitian and personal trainer today? 
It actually makes me do a lot of the things that I tell my clients to do, like keeping a food journal and exercising regularly and getting enough sleep just to make sure that all those lifestyle things aren't affecting me um, even more than, than what I already have with EPI. And Dr. Ross, what steps can people take for better control of their digestive health? Well, if we're talking about EPI in particular, they can go to identifyepi.com because it has a lot of information about the symptoms we're discussing. But for overall GI health, uh, Julie mentioned a couple of them. Managing your stress is extremely important. Getting enough sleep is also great for overall health, but digestive health in particular. Keeping a food journal is a great way to kind of take stock on how you're feeling and what particular foods may be affecting your digestion. It's good information to bring to your doctor, but you don't want to cut out or eliminate any foods on your own. Speak to your doctor first because it could affect the testing later on and ultimately the diagnosis that you, you need to have. Um, and you also, when you're talking about digestive health or overall health goals, you want to be realistic and set yourself some achievable goals. You don't want to set the bar so high that you're kind of doomed to fail and you get discouraged. You also want to be patient. Uh, when we're talking about health, this is a long-term situation. Don't expect immediate results or if you're not feeling well to feel better immediately. It's a journey with your doctor. It's a partnership and you want to you know, have, manage your expectations in terms of that and also give yourself some concrete small steps to achieve that goal. And it may be getting more sleep. It may be exercising more than you normally do. All of those things can really help. And where can we go for more information? Uh, you can go to identifyepi.com. Well, thank you both so much. I truly appreciate it. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.